Where were you born? In uh, Brooklyn, New York. Did you get any formal training in, write, in uh, writing? No. No? You just no, started no writing? No formal training. You just started writing? Just, yeah, right. Just started writing. No, actually, a friend of mine, a, a really remarkable character, who is in my book, I wrote a book, and uh, he uh, was so good that one of his stories got him a job in Chicago in the Ziff Davis Company. Ziff Davis was a publishing company then that published amazing stories and other science fiction stories. He got this job and he wouldn't go to Chicago alone. So two of his friends, and I was one of them, had to go with them. And, and we lived together there and he taught me how to write. Or rather, he gave me a chance to write a story. He said he'd buy, he'd buy it because he was the editor. So uh, I, I wrote this story and, and he bought it. That was the beginning. How did you get into comic books? My uh, agent was Julie Schwartz. He uh, sold maybe uh, about 10 of my efforts at science fiction. At about that time, early on, uh, he got a job in Detective Comics as an editor. And immediately I began selling him comic book stories. It was easy to switch from science fiction to comic books. I liked it much better. Why? Well, I didn't have to do a lot of routine stuff as you have to do in writing. You have to tell where the story takes place, what kind of a terrain, things that seem boring to me. Whereas in comic books, I only had to deal with the actual the storyline and the dialogue. And that's what I like best. Did you first work for Fawcett or for DC? Yeah, for Fawcett. What did you do there? The people that I knew in Fawcett were either named Rod Reed, Wendell Crowley, or Franz Herren. Three people that I knew and all, all dead by now, I'm quite sure. Did you know Otto Binder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I knew Otto Binder very well. He, he was a pal. Binder was a very reliable type. He wasn't like me, full of... Uh, ups and downs and things like that. But he was a very regular guy who was very uh, very talented and very good, yeah. Good storyteller, too. Good storyteller, too, yeah. Now, I'll tell you one thing. In the stories that you did, both in the 40s and in the 60s, yeah. you like to do things that tied into science. The atom, he shrunk down in size. Yeah. The Flash sped up so fast that yeah. he would change through molecules. Yeah. Well, Did you yes. like using devices yes, like that? Yes, but I think I prefer to do uh, realistic stories like Hopalong Cassidy, which was a sort of humorous western. I think I preferred those. To superheroes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you do any romance books? No, I never did romance. Did you want to do them at all? No. I, I never had any feeling for romance. Science fiction stories yeah, for a lot strange of adventures yeah, and, and a lot mystery of science in space. Fiction, yeah. Did you get a big kick out of it when uh, when you did the science fiction uh, stuff? No doubt. Oh, no doubt. But that's a little hard to remember now. Do, yeah. do you remember like when the space the space race was on and Sputnik and all those things were going? Very on? very well. I remember that era very well. Yeah. When Russia lofted the first Sputnik. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that very well. That was in 1960 something because Kennedy gave us 10 years to get catch up, and he caught up before 1969. Um, did you have a lot of contact with the other writers in the business? Sure, I was, <laughs> it took me a whole year, at least it seems to me now, it took a whole year for me. I was the leader and the uh, ringleader, you might say, in the attempts to form a union among the writers, not the artists, but the writers. We couldn't get the artists. They, they were getting too much money. But the writers, we had a chance with the writers, and I collected the six main writers, Otto Binder among them, and, and I took a whole year and got them into Leibowitz's office in the right temper, with the right feeling, and, and my whole idea was simply to gain reprint rights, which we didn't have yet, and they were reprinting our material without paying us, and I thought that was a kind of a crime. I was very happy when we finally marched into Leibowitz's office, and maybe I, I began to open my mouth. No sooner did he take get sight of me than Leibowitz says to the boys, he says, I don't know why you came in here like this, because I'm get, just getting ready to give you a raise of $2 a page. Well, at that moment, the whole union collapsed. Everybody was so happy. 
to get two dollars a page, and I was disgusted. I was thoroughly disgusted, and I couldn't do anything. It just dissolved. So did you pack up and go to Europe at that point? No, no, not at that point, but I thought they might fire me because I was tough. I, I wanted to force them to have reprint rights, but I couldn't do anything with, without the other writers. The artwork pages used to have a stamp on the back that said, property of, you know, and so on and so forth, yeah. and, it was, and it was basically said that it was a work for hire. Did your oh. script pages have work for hire no, I don't think so. Did you have a contract with them? I don't think so. No, I don't know when when it started or what the reason. Right. You did a, a lot of variety of stories in the early 50s, Charlie Chan and all those types of stories. Did you ever research any of that stuff or did you just do it? That's a good question, but it's problematical whether I ever researched any story of any kind. I recognized that the purpose of the story was to tell a story, and that was usually some kind of a mental activity. It was a documentary. In comics, that, I mean, that's why I was successful in comics, is I never made it documentary, which would have toned it down completely, uh, considerably, I should say. Did you think of comic books as a way to get to some other form of writing in the writing field? No, I really didn't think like that. In the beginning, when I did a story called Lance O'Casey, I was delighted with the medium, you see. Lance O'Casey was a completely realistic story about an adventurer, a young adventurer in the South Seas. And uh, I was delighted with the ability or the opportunity to tell a, a realistic story about a young adventurer in, in a, a, a savage, natural setting. It seemed to me wonderful, the way to, to tell a story uh, using the comics medium. But uh, after that, with the superpowers, it was obvious that you could only tell it in the comics, and that was different. You could never tell a Superman story in prose or, or an ordinary story. You could only tell it with the comics. So in that sense, comics was meant for Superman. It wasn't meant for Lance or Casey. Well, are you a big movie fan? Yeah, I'm a big movie fan. What kind? Any kind, if they're good. <laughs> Any kind, if they're good. Did you ever think about writing movies? Yeah, as a matter of fact, my great friend, my wonderful friend, who's written up in my book, David Byrne, one of the most extraordinary people who ever lived. Someday, if you ever meet Jack Rollins, who is the producer of Woody Allen's movies, ask him about Dave Byrne. He and I wrote a movie on Casanova. We wrote a movie, we wrote a whole movie, including dialogue and then so I, a scenario. We wrote a scenario between the two of us for uh, about the life of Casanova, and it never sold. C'est la vie. That was the end of that. That was the end of that. How come you left comics? What did you do? I, I guess I felt that I should go on to bigger and better things. I, I felt, see, I, I'm, I'm not an ordinary individual. Uh, do you know what an epiphany is? Mm -hmm. I've had it. After you have an epiphany, you are never uh, on a normal level again. So if I, ha if I had an epiphany, I had an opportunity to uh, receive signals from a source where the real power comes from. I, I didn't really, I didn't know it in those terms then, but very gradually, I realized that I could write something much better than comics, and I did. When you started in comics, did you think it was a business that was going to last? <laughs> That's another good question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we started, it wasn't sure at all that it would last. Yeah. And, and we who were floating around the system, which had just sprung up out of a six-page a uh, comic book on Superman, basically, we who were floating around it, we were a little surprised every week to get a check or every month and so on. So uh, I'm afraid, I think we, we didn't expect it to last. It was a surprise. So all of this is a big surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all this, I mean, did these, uh, these comic book conventions, 30 in a year or something like that, I, I still can't understand it at all, let alone believe it. I, ca I can't understand how they, could, how, how they could have one or two conventions, I understand, but they have 
20 or more. And uh, I don't understand that. I don't understand what's happened to the field. These people that come up to me and thank me with almost with tears in their eyes, I don't understand that. Well, maybe it helped them in their childhood. Oh, in their childhood. Yeah, well, we've been out of America for many decades. And America has changed, and we have not been prepared for that. We're just getting acquainted now. This is the first time in at least 10 or 12 years since our wedding anniversary, 50th, uh, that we have been in America together. One last question. Is there any kind of good, fond memory you have of the business that you did while you were working in it? Yeah, I, I thought that the relationship between Julie Schwartz and myself was a, a heartwarming relationship. It was steady, it was fast, it was good, it didn't change. And uh, uh, after I finished with comics, I could always look back on that as something that w was important for me and so on. A good friendship? With right, good friendship. <laughs>